call to order. I'm sorry. That's all right. Please rise to the flag salute. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please, Lisa. Commissioner Kreeble? Here. Commissioner Landgraf? Here. Mayor Holtzman? Here. Pursuant to the Open Public Meeting Act, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in accordance with the law. We are going to go into an executive session at the beginning instead of the end due to people scheduling. So, uh, unfortunately, the people in the chambers have to leave the room, except for Nicole, our attorney, and Tim McGuire, our solicitor. And Jim, anyone out that you've let into the meeting, you have to uh, put back in the waiting room. Um, yeah, I'll put them in back in now. It shouldn't be too long. Okay. Al, you two stay in here. Sorry. I know. Sorry. You like just sort of melded in the chair there. Ernie, would you just shut the door if you don't mind behind you? Oh, there's that little, little greedy thing. Yeah, everybody's back in the waiting room. Wait for me to read this. We need a motion first or... Do I have a motion to go into executive session? You so moved. Read that and then, then okay. vote on the motion. Okay. okay. The New Jersey Open Public Meetings Act permits the discussion of certain matters within an executive session as an exception to the certain provisions of said law. Ventnor City Board of Commissioners wishes to discuss certain matters which qualify as exceptions in executive session. No action binding upon the Board of Commissioners will be taken within an executive session and the discussion conducted in closed session will be disclosed to the public when legally permitted and when public interest will no longer be served by keeping such matters confidential. Matters to be discussed are matters relating to collective bargaining agreements. Yeah. Yeah. Do I have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Do I have a second? Second motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Is Leon coming? I don't well, I think thought Leon's Mike. Here, right? No Leon? No Leon, right, Nicole? He was, he was no, it's not. Okay. 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 And, Good. and I should indicate it is 538 and we don't anticipate taking any binding action in executive session, but we probably will when we come out of executive session. Yep. Yes, in executive session, we discussed one matter that was a, an update concerning collective bargaining agreements, uh, negotiations, excuse me, between the city and the PBA. And I do believe as a result of those negotiations, there will be something placed on the agenda tonight. Actually, we have the resolution draft form for us to be able to vote on it now So oh. at, at the end. Um, Okay. So the commission will vote on that uh, before we jump to the next item on our agenda. I just like to say one thing before we vote. Uh, I do want to thank Maria, Commissioner Preble, Chief Biaggi, uh, Leon, our auditor, Nicole, our labor attorney, Al, our CFO, as well as the negotiating team of the PBA. Um, this contract is a fair, reasonable contract, as well as taxpayer sensitive. Um, so uh, I'm really, I'm really happy. I think, I think it, it's a win-win for everyone. And I just wanted to thank everybody involved. In well, I second that really well done. And, and Tim, you put in yeoman's work on this yourself. I know that was <laughs> not easy, right. not easy. Um, so, um, public on it and I, I should indicate it's 559. Okay. Thank you. So do I have a motion to approve the resolution approving the memorandum of agreement between the city of Ventnor and the police? Well, I can never say, I was going to say PBA local 97 and authorizing the execution of a new collective no negotiation agreement between the parties covering the period January 1, 2021 through December 31st, 2024. Do I have a motion? 
So moved. Do I have a second? Second motion. Please, a roll call, please. Commissioner Creeble? Yes. Commissioner Langreath? Yes. Mayor Holtzman? Yes. Okay. Next, we have um, former mayor of Ventnor. He's picture somewhere over there, uh, uh, Tim Kreischer. He now works for Atlantic County government, and he is working with, um, trying to work with the, the municipalities in Atlantic County to do shared services. Tim's going to come up to the mic, and he is going to do a presentation for us. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I want to thank the Mayor and Commissioners for giving me the opportunity to speak to you tonight. Uh, as the Mayor said, I'm the Shared Service Coordinator for Atlantic County. I've been in the position since April, and I'm trying to get around to all the towns and, and uh, make the elected officials aware of the Local Efficiency Achievement Program, which is a state program better known as LEAP. Uh, I usually have a PowerPoint presentation to give, but I was asked to keep my presentation to five minutes, so trying to be judicious and in the information that I give you. But the uh, LEAP program was established in 2019 with the goal of providing high quality services uh, at a more efficient, uh, more uh, cheaper uh, cost. Uh, provides the, an opportunity to incentivize municipalities to look into shared services and to explore opportunities uh, to share uh, services, not only with other municipalities could be with school district, their own school district, fire districts, the county or, or authorities. Uh, there's three types of grants that come under this. One is a fellowship grant, which actually funds my position. Uh, the other is a challenge grants, which are uh, for innovative ideas that provide shared servers of great significance. Um, again, it could be with county, municipalities, fire district schools, authorities. It just has to be two government agencies that, sh that enter into the shared service agreement. Uh, it could be up to $150,000 per county with a maximum of three projects per county. Uh, to give you an example, this is the money and grant that the Atlantic County received to uh, look into the shared uh, countywide municipal court system, which you have uh, agreed to go into. Just to give you some other ideas, what's out there. Uh, some have uh, shared medical examiner, uh, fire EMS service. Uh, some towns down in the lower end of Cape May are doing a study for regional uh, emergency response. Uh, some other towns are doing shared equipment and repair. Morris, uh, up in Morris County, uh, Morris Township got together with five other municipalities to look into doing a study on how they can purchase and share big, heavy uh, public works equipment, and not only to buy it, but then a, a process to repair it, especially those vehicles that need a level of sophistication to repair and some type of certificate to work on. Um, so that's under the, uh, uh, the challenge grant. There's also implementation grants, which are grants that are available to municipalities for uh, one-time cost to implement shared services. Again, counties, municipalities, school districts, fire districts can all be involved. These were up to $250,000. There's no limit to the number of projects that a municipality or a, a government agency can enter into. It is a 75, 25% match by the local agency. Um, however, that your 25% can be offset by uh, in-kind in services. So like Mr. McGuire, his bills to I'm always put on the attorney. Yeah, you know, to draft to dra draft up the fun, right? resolution or whatever can all be all set as part of your 25%. It's just been volunteered. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the one thing is school consolidation and regionalization studies are funded at hundred percent. Mm -hmm. uh, there are several local school districts that have done this. That's Port Republic, Galloway and Mullica have gone together to do a study to see how they could deliver educational services in a more efficient manner. Port Republic's lost almost $500,000 in state aid, and you can imagine how significant that is to a small district. So they're really struggling to maintain their school. Weymouth, Buna, and Estelle Manor have done the same thing. They're waiting to hear. The other three communities did get a $66,000 grant uh, to do the study. Um, Estelle Manor has put in for two dump trucks to uh, purchase to plow the county roads in a shared service agreement, similar to what you, you guys do. Um, 
they have 2,200 or 22 square miles of road. It's at the far end of the county, so the county had a difficult time getting there. Uh, they would like to do it on their own. And again, they build just like you do. They bill, they will build the county for their time and the use of the truck. But basically, they're going to get, if they get the grant, they could get two dump trucks or maybe one that they can use 364 days out of the year. How many days are they going to have to plow the roads? Uh, again, I'm sure you're well aware of the Lane County Improvement Authority and the ACUA. It can be a shared service agreement with them. Uh, Hamilton Township just recently entered into a shared service agreement with the ACUA to pick up their uh, curbside trash. And they got part of the grant was to buy four, uh, pick up uh, four trash trucks because the ACA, ACUA needed that expanded capability to enter into the agreement. So they were able to pay through the LEAP program. So I, I have some other examples of some things I've been working on. Uh, your uh, Dino and uh, Summer participated in a, sorry, you couldn't make it the other day. Talk to them today. Yeah. Uh, for uh, uh, a software package to manage your uh, CRS program, but I have a few other things here, but I see I'm 43 seconds over. So, all right. I, so, I we're not that tight. I'm sorry. We're not that tight on time. Oh, uh, I I do what I'm told. I'm. Just, <laughs> and it wasn't told, me, right, Tim? Keep it to. I don't know who it was. Maria said she was asked, and you said five minutes. So a forerunner thing, and this doesn't go against your time. We give the mayor another three minutes. Absolutely. <laughs> I was I, I was going to stay and get back up under the open session <laughs> and do get the, my other three minutes under that. But if you can give it to me now, yeah, yield to the three minutes. <laughs> but the, the forerunner thing, I talked to Dino and, and Summer today, and, and it's it can be extremely helpful. That's the software for yeah. CSR. They see a CRS and, CRS and and it'll help us with our flood certs and all that. And they, the important we'll, we'll, thing about that commissioner is because of the number of floods and the financial situation of the insurance fund. They're really cracking down that the certificate of elevations, you have to have 90% compliance rate right. or you, they drop you down to a 10, which means you lose all your discounts. Uh, so it's pretty significant to maintain that, uh, that 90% compliance rate. And this helps you. Uh, Cape May can or Cape May city, Lou Belasco says it saves them about 600 hours a yeah. year. Yeah. So it, it's, it's pretty effective. And my plan is now that, I've, we've had this webinar, I'm waiting to hear back from some towns, is to look for a shared service. One thing, that, why didn't combine police departments? Why didn't combine public works? I, we all know that's probably never gonna happen, at least in our lifetime. So I'm trying to take a different approach in how the county can take the lead in making everybody more efficient. And by using the economy of scales by all 11 towns in the CRS program going into this, uh, we can get a better rate than if each town did it themselves. Uh, and maybe the county can pick up the cost or, or split it or do something. Out of the 11 towns, I think 67% of the rateable base is in those 11 towns. 72% of the county's population are in those 11 towns. So it, it's certainly something that the county do. So I'm in the process of putting a proposal together for the administration to see uh, about this leap. One thing I did, I did leave out trying to stay within the five minutes is that the notice of funding availability will be out in September. And then that will provide the deadlines and everything. Last year, the deadline was June 30th. It'll probably be earlier this year because they're getting the money out earlier. Uh, so but I'll certainly keep everybody apprised. One of the things that uh, Lisa may be interested in, another project I'm working on, is electronic doc document and record management uh, system for municipalities to store all their information on a cloud-based system. Again, for the county to take the lead, bundle everybody together, and then offer it to the municipalities for a small fee, or maybe the county can pick it up. But again, by using LEAP, we can get 75% of the costs hopefully paid through that. So that's one of the things that I'm doing. We're also possibly looking at emergency dispatch for EMS and fire, not police. Uh, that, battle, that battle's been fought and lost. <laughs> that ain't happening. I've been told to stay away from that. But, you know, I, and police and fire reported to me for, 12 years, and I never realized there is a significant difference, maybe not here in Ventnor, but in a lot of towns, dispatching a fire call from a police call, and to have a dedicated staff that will just handle fire and EMS, it's not so much a cost savings, it will actually expand the cost with the county, but it's, it's a public safety issue. 
uh, if I can just interrupt, I think it's probably a, might be an opportunity to re sort of acquaint with um, with Chief Cahill. He's already doing a lot of shared services just organically. We got the Cascade for air with uh, for air with Longport and Margate. Uh, he's always doing training and some equipment, but he may have some things that are almost able to be sh you know candidates that you know maybe maybe reach out to him. He might have some. I have talked to Chief Kale. One of the other I suggest our ideas I had is you know with a number of bayfront properties that we have with decks and some homes right being on the bulkhead. How would you fight a fire in the back? You won't be able to shoot the water up because the decks there. Uh, you know, so I thought this, the LEAP program would be a perfect opportunity for Retner, Margate, and Atlantic City to buy a fire boat right. uh, to fight the fire. You can buy it. Longport has something. Longport has really it, a but. boat, not really fire, but no. it's. Yeah, they, they, they have a rescue boat that they retrofit, which is possible with a pump that they could do. But again, God bless them, but it's a volunteer fire department and you're kind of relying on them. Uh, I know they were going to build a dock, but the last time I checked, it was sitting in the yard. So they have to drive it over to Egg Harbor Township, Sea View Harbor, to put it in the water. So, and again, the chief was here. I, my recollection is a fire doubles every minute. So time, time is of an essence. So I thought that was an opportunity. Yeah. And, and again, another opportunity that I sent to uh, all the municipalities is you plow the county roads. Uh, why not brine, broadcast brine at the same time? Uh, there's a significant advantage to, to brining roads. Uh, it reduces your salt that you have to use. Sometimes you don't even have to plow the roads. It's more environmentally sound to use brine. And you could get a dump truck again for 25%. You do the county roads, but then I'd be able to do your portion of Ventnor Avenue and all of Atlantic Avenue, do a shared service agreement with Margate and Longport to do theirs uh, and, you know, for 25% of the cost of a dump truck. You know, it might be something if you're interested, we can certainly talk about. But uh, I had sent that out to all the municipalities a while ago. So be glad to answer any questions or comments. The other thing, too, that I want is I know you do have some shared services agreement. By law, they are to be registered with the DCA. Now, I'm sure they're not going to send a state trooper to any of your house <laughs> to, to lock you up if you don't. Only bad. But what it does help She's do, what it does help is for these type of programs for them to be able to justify it to the governor and say, here, these right. are the savings that are being generated. It's worthwhile doing it another year. Without that information, these type of programs could, could be killed. So if you do have any, and if you can copy me as well, because I'm trying to build a database of all these shared service agreements. So now I'm in a position to share them with somebody else if there is a need. Lisa thinks she does that already, but I'll make sure I'll, yeah. sure. I'll ask yeah. her. I, I mean, no, I think I believe we do. I'm almost 100 percent. We already do that because okay. I think I've already sent a couple that we do participate in recently. Recently. Yeah, I think I already sent it off, but I'll double check and I'll Maybe make sure. Copy. You yeah. Yep. Copy. All right. OK. Mary, I I know how to yes. You, you have a, you said that the shared service study for schools is 100 percent. 100 percent. Okay. Like I said, those three towns got 66. 100 percent for the study is what the county. 100 percent funded. And, um, and, and then, but one other thing, there is a bill. I think it's the governor signed it. I haven't been able to find out. Sweeney has another bill out there that provides money for K through 12 regionalization, which I don't know if you're interested that's, in that, but it, that's fully funded as well. Yeah. Maybe we put them in touch with Quinlan. I think that's not down the river. That's yeah, it's closer. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's creeping up the creek. Yeah. Area, so we need to get that done. And then um, I know I just, just uh, it occurred to me that I think we lost our elevator inspection share with Atlantic City. Yeah. I believe it's not back um, their inspectors are back I'm not 100%. i know there was a big issue with elevator inspections yeah. so we had a share with atlantic city i, I yeah. think we lost it i don't know if it's back or not so we'll, maybe that's we'll just on our radar i'll follow up with jimmy tomorrow on that and then was there any update on the court is there one last person i think on the fence that we needed to uh they're waiting to hear from hamilton township uh, they they uh, meet on august 2nd so hopefully uh they will join uh there's some other towns that are still considering it, but Hamilton Township with their caseload uh, is going to make a difference in the, in the numbers. Right. Everybody, without them, everybody saves. It's a matter of how much. But we right. do need that one more, right? I'm sorry? We need one more. Well, I think Hamilton Township has, right now, they have a few other municipalities yeah. with them. I mean, the mayor's on that committee, so she may even know more than I. But, uh, okay. Okay. Great. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Have a good night. Good, good information. Thank you. 
we don't we don't have any department heads to nope. anything, right? And nothing on capital. Am I correct? Nope. Right. Okay. So, uh, the following are the items scheduled for us to take action after we do our workshop portion of the meeting. We will not have any minutes to approve. <clears throat> we will have an, um, an ordinance to introduce, and that's 2021-016, and that is amending and supplementing Chapter 87, building numbering of Section 4 specifications. And in reading this, this is the, the house numbers, I guess, the address. They have to be four, uh, they have to go from uh, three feet to four feet off the ground. Am I correct? The size of the letter? And it should be three, three inches. Four, four inches. Three inches to four inches. Yeah. It does okay. say three feet to four feet. Okay, I'm not crazy, that, right? That was me. Sorry. All right. So I'm thinking, okay. <laughs> Although it would be nice. That would violate the sign order. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I thought it was like just move them up, and that's why. I, okay, so it's going from three inches to four the minimum inches. Minimum Yeah. So here's my question. Silly question, but a question somebody's going to ask. If people have numbers on their house that are three inches, they're not going to have to change them to four inches, are they? To comply with this ordinance, are they grandfathered in, or do people need to go and That's get four-inch numbers? So it was a silly question. No, not even a silly though question I was talking about feet. Yeah. <laughs> Arabic numbers minimum. Does it say anything in here that? Sounds good. Onerous. They ask everybody in the city. Here's what the is there, and then Jimmy. This is what Jimmy asked, me. but I think it came to light. When the I don't know if it's for new homes. It's gotta be for new Tim. Did you have any any insight on that? For new construction. I do not. I'm gonna look right now, but I, I can't imagine. I can't imagine yeah, I can that, see us going forward right. when we when you when you amend the ordinance, you go forward, you don't right you don't Every, go backwards. Yeah. So I was just asking because I was thinking. So we can introduce it and we'd ask that that get that question. This is adoption, right? It's introduction. It's introduction. introduction. Oh, my bad. So we can, we can, yeah, we can, we clarify. can clarify it. Right. Yeah, we could do that. Right. That would so be helpful. I'm glad I uh, asked the question. It's a good question. There's no stupid question. Yep. Okay. Right, we'll go with that. Yep. Okay. It, as long as we get that, that direction. We need, yes. Yeah. And it should be spelled out so there's no confusion. Um, if we, a question for our solicitor, if we amend that, we would have to reintroduce. You would. Okay. If the amendment is that it's it's uh, only prospective in application, then you would have to reintroduce. So why don't we just pull it then? Yeah, let's pull it. I think we have to be clear on that. How about we just pull that for tonight because we don't have enough specifics yeah. on it. You go with that one? Yes. The devil is the detail. Yeah, yep. okay. just pull it. Otherwise okay. we get the entire city putting four foot in. Four foot, <laughs> four foot numbers on their house. <laughs> <laughs> the mayor said we need four feet, four foot numbers. That's not a good one. No. Okay. <laughs> so we're just going to move on. At least it, did, it was feet, though, right, Lance? I was saying in the notes it said in the ordinance <laughs> it said inches, but in the notes it's yeah, feet. Right. Okay. <laughs> Let's make it short. That's funny. Okay. Okay. The next item is we were, we're going to have um, a public hearing and then the adoption of ordinance twenty twenty one dash one fifteen, and this is something we discussed at the last meeting. So. This evening that we have it for the public hearing and then adoption and it's amending chapter 115 fees fish and pier regulations of the code of the city of Bettner. and it's simply stating there's no camping out no sleeping overnight on the fish and pier the only activity would be fishing and of course if people are up there just sightseeing or relaxing and we discussed that mm -hmm. last meeting so we're okay with that yes mr Creeble? yes Next, we have resolutions that we will be uh, voting on by consent, and I will go through them. Uh, the first one is 2021-243, and that's authorizing the settlement in the matter of Sandstock, Inc. versus the city of Atlantic City. And just to clarify, and then um, Tim McGuire, if you want to add to it, but this is um, prior to our administration when we came in office, this was... Um, Evidently, there was supposed to be a Latino festival, and it was scheduled for in the city of Etner. Things fell through the cracks, and there was no festival, and the organization has come after the city and sued us for um, a very large sum. And 
Thank you very much, Mr. McGuire, has gotten it down to a settlement of 30000 for the loss of revenue they would have brought in. Did I? I mean, I don't know if you want to explain it anymore. I think that's just revenue and their alleged cost. Right. Um, it's a joint settlement. The city of Atlantic City is also involved, and the city of Atlantic City is contributing twice as much as the city of Atlantic City. So this has haunted us from the day we got in office in May of 16, and now it's It'll be done. Oh, done. Thank God. Thank you. We okay with that, Commissioners? Yes. Yep. yes. Okay. The next is Resolution 2021-244, and this is uh, we're, uh, the City of Ventner, Ventner is entering into a revocable license agreement concerning the property at 6709 Atlantic Avenue, and this was vetted by our city engineer, Ed Stinson. I think we're good with that, correct? Yes. The next is 2021-245. Resolution of the City of Ventnor <coughs> authorizing us to enter um, another revocable license agreement concerning the property located at 5015 Winchester Avenue. And again, vetted by our engineer, Ed Stinson. Yes? Yes. We're good. The next is 2021 246, and that is approving the 2021 2022 liquor license renewal for Big <coughs> A Property Liquor Holdings LLC, which is a pocket license. Okay with that? Yes. <coughs> Next is 2021-247, authorizing a refund uh, for the recreation fee uh, for a Noah Messina for the downbeat surf camp. Self-explanatory. Next is 2021-248, and that's New Jersey extending the um, Ventner, extending the grace period of the 2021 third quarter taxes. Now, is there a reason for this? We don't have a certified rate as of this time, so we just have to extend it 25 days from the day we mail the bills out. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I just had a little question mark there. I wanted to make sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm sure the residents don't mind. No. Grace period. Next is, uh, are we okay with that? Yes. Yes. The next is 2021-249, and that's authorizing a change order number one final for the reconstruction of Newport Avenue. We're good. In the explanation Ed, I read? Uh, that is an increase of $4,300 due to the actual cost. That's why. The actual measures of the Thank you. Next is resolution 2021 250, and that is a tax abatement agreement for uh, Block 92, Lot 101, also known as 1B North Marion Avenue. The next is also a tax abatement, and that is for 1A North Marion Avenue. The next is 2021-253, a tax abatement for 109 South. 252. 252. How did I get nine? <coughs> no, Same 109 is right, but the, the resolution is 252. 252. Uh, for 109 South Baltimore Avenue. The next is a tax abatement for... 505 Wellington Avenue tax abatement. Next is 2021-254, and that is a tax abatement for 17 South Newark Avenue. Another tax abatement for 302 North Cornwall Avenue, that's 2021-255. The next resolution is 2021-256, and that's a tax abatement for 102 South Baltimore Avenue. The next is 2021-257, and that is a tax abatement for 310 North Dudley Avenue. The next is 2021-258, and that is um, awarding a contract for the storm sewer pipe replacement in the Lafayette utility, to the Lafayette utility construction, not to exceed 14320. And where, where is that? That is the corner of the intersection of the Nashville Yep. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next is 2021-259, and that is transferring uh, Leonard to Beck from public safety telecommunication trainee to a uh, parking violation officer. Are we okay with all of them, gentlemen? Yes. yes. Okay. Then we will have approval of our bills and payrolls. Do we have any discussion items tonight? Okay. No. Anything in writing? No. 
So the next is our public portion. This is for the public. If you would like to speak on any of the items that I mentioned that we will be voting on, you um, once we open it up, you state your name and your address and anything that we are going to vote on. There will be another public portion at the end of the meeting for anything you would like to speak on. So uh, do I have a motion to open to the public? So moved. Do I have a second? Second motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Jim, see if anybody out there is, thank you, Ed. Is it, Thanks, on, Ed. Is it on something that we talked yeah. about? Good okay. luck. See you, Ed. It's not a donation, but congratulations on your daughter, by the way. That'll be at the end. It'll be at the end. Okay. And I go fast. We just have to touch all the pieces we just did. It's, it's anybody online? Ed. Is there anybody from the public on Zoom who wishes to speak or question on any of the items that are being voted on tonight? Please make yourself known within Zoom by raising your hand or within the chat feature, and you will be recognized. Once recognized, you may turn your camera on, give your name and address, and speak to the commission. I don't see anyone else. Okay, thank you. I have a motion to close public portion. So moved. We have a second. Second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 We have a motion to close the workshop portion of the meeting and call to order the regular meeting. So moved. We have a second. Second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 We do not have any minutes tonight. We took off that introduction of that ordinance, correct? Yes. So the yes. next thing on the agenda is a public hearing for the ordinance 2021-015. We have a motion to open to the public hearing. Motion to open public hearing on ordinance 2021-015. Do I have a second? Second the motion. Lisa, roll call, please. Commissioner Kreeble? Yes. Commissioner Langria? Yes. Mayor Holtzman? Yes. Okay, it's now open to the public for this ordinance only. Jim? Anybody from the public on Zoom who wishes to speak or question on ordinance 2021-015, please make yourself known within Zoom by raising your hand or within the chat feature and you'll be recognized. Nobody. No one. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Um, do I have a motion to adopt ordinance 2020? Oh, sorry. Wait, motion to close the public hearing on ordinance 2021-015. So moved. Do I have a second? Second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Do I have a motion to adopt ordinance 2021-015? Motion to adopt ordinance 2021-015. Do I have a second? Second the motion. Lisa, roll call, please. Commissioner Kreeble? Yes. Commissioner Langria? Yes. Mayor Holtzman? Yes. Next, do I have a motion to adopt by consent resolution 2021-243 through 2021-259? So moved. Do I have a second? Second the motion. Lisa, roll call, please. Commissioner Kreeble? Yes. Commissioner, Commissioner Langria? Yes. Mayor Holtzman? Yes. Uh, Al, will you please give us our bills and payroll for this period? Yes, uh, the bill list for this period uh, totals $2,013,604.51. And the payroll for this period is 719367.62. Thank you. Do I have a motion to approve bills and payroll stated from our CFO? So moved. Do I have a second? Second the motion. Lisa, roll call, please. Commissioner Kreeble? Yes. Commissioner Langria? Yes. Mayor Holtzman? Yes. Our, our safety report is in there for that. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, the next thing is any commissioner comments or reports? Um, very briefly, the storm that rolled through the town last night, several storms, three in a row successively. He was over under the bed in the basement. He was uh -huh. freaking out. Um, our well 10, which is out by the school, was struck. Uh, the well's fine, but the mechanism, the electronic mechanism that tells us how much depth of water is in that tower, it's gone. That's totally dried. Right. So Ernie had people come out today, they looked at it. They're going to give us a price to completely repair that. So is it like a panel? Like more, a more than that. Yeah. It has goes up to the top of the tower and it has that trunk. Nice. So all that thing got dried. Nice. Yeah. So it, it's happened before. Right. It's a few thousand. It's, it's not Terrible. We didn't lose the power. We didn't lose the well. Right. We lost the electronics. Um, other than that, we're fine with water. We have plenty of water. Um, Love our we're, water. we're pumping more from well eight right now. We're monitoring that. Make sure we have enough. 
for the weekend coming in. So the water's not bad. It's just we don't know how much is in there. And that's what keeps pressuring you. That's helpful. So it's pressuring. All right. So you call the club. You didn't teach me that. But thank you. We're still getting uh, you know, the D and C variant. Yes. You should need to come sit on the planning board. I'm coming. Right? I'm coming. I think I need to check that. Yeah. They're interesting. Because you take my place, right? I think I do. Yeah. Right. Anything else? Or Tim does. I'm not sure. I got it. Nope, I'm good. Um, I'm, I'm good. I, I, uh, I'll update you guys on the, my summer project next meeting around. I, I was out of town most of the week, but um, I do know we have a, a flagpole being installed for the for the uh, St. Leonard's track for uh, commemoration on yeah. August and August 14th. So we, and I sorted all that out. That's on the way and in the project. Great. Good. i just like to make one co comment. On behalf, I think, for all of us, that um, the city looks beautiful. Uh, the events that, that the city, the, the concerts, and the different things, I hear it all the time from people. Um, I, I think um, our goal was five years ago. Yeah. We're getting there. I, we're there, but we're, we keep going and going. The city going, does you know. look really good. The boardwalks never look better. The trash that are set for pulling, the, and then the signs in the manor that I think look great. Awesome. And the, I, was, I got to see the details. At the at the yeah. at the beach. Oh, that's right. And, yeah, yeah, and yeah. it was a packed packed group. We 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 kind of brainstormed on what that new shell should be at um, because it's just become such a great community event and uh, food trucks. Yeah, I mean, it could be. Um, I think it needs to be big enough to. It could be a real signature venue for the city if we do something mm -hmm. right, architecturally speaking. Right. That yeah. is maybe. A little oversized for what we need that could all that still have it there um you know a band shell something like a mini version of what they had at um uh those outdoor concerts at, right. at, at the what is it the yeah, man yeah. a mini man center oh yeah mini <laughs> well yeah. I mean, I that, that's, that's yeah. a big lift <laughs> that's a big lift i got it but I, it, it's You're right. just it's Absolutely. just the uh, you know people use the, the park as a place to sit people use the boardwalk as a place to sit and um, I think the band, it's attracting better music mm -hmm. acts yeah, sure, that sure. are seeing that. And it's, a, it's helping the vendors. The vendors almost to a, to a truck all sell out. Oh, my, yes. And, um, and it, it's one of those things that I think brings a, has like, a big slash small town sure. event to the city. You know, the event I attended for uh, when it was, uh, don't call me Francis. Oh, yeah. Oh, huge. There. Huge. Yeah, we were there. 1,500 people. Yeah, it was. 1,500 people. Mm -hmm. And every food truck sold out. Yep. Every one of them sold out. It seems like that core team of Donna and Ike and um, her Deanna. sister Deanna. And, and then I think uh, Dougie has been really helpful with them, making yep. sure everything gets done. And they got, they kind of have, they kind of got their rhythm going where right. it happens right. quickly and right now. And We're, Andy as well. Andy from the, um, who's online. They have a good thanking him to get those vendors sorted out. They, they've, they've working through the bugs that, where it really Farmer's clicks. Right. I mean, it was about two weekends ago, it was a weekend, and Assemblyman Maggio texted me. He said, I just left Cambridge Avenue Beach. That's where you guys go, right? He said, I just left Cambridge Avenue Beach, and the city looks good. And I said, thank you. And that was like, I mean, he lives in Northfield, and he took the time to say that. You know, he, he took the time to send me a text to say me. I mean, Public Works also, like doing the worst first and some of the streets that have always been on. Um, Flooding and potholes, you don't see that as much. We still have, we still have enough. Yeah, but, I mean, but, <laughs> but the really bad ones. Work. Can they I say the phone calls right. today? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the really, you know, it's but um, well, but it, it's, really, it's it's a slow process. It takes it takes money, it takes time, and in order, look, yes, we could go out and bond for everything and do it all at once, and the taxes would be crazy. Right. So we have to do it in in increments. We right. take bites. Yep, take bites as many. Like eating an elephant one bite at a time. Exactly. So it, it's it's been an, an effort. You know, Ed's been a godsend. Yeah. Uh, so Ernie's Ernie's been doing great, and the team they put together over there, is with with the guys helping out. Right. Dougie's been phenomenal. Yeah. He wants to do the events. He likes being there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You can and, and he enjoys it. So we have to make sure he's happy. With it. Yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Moving the trash around, making sure. Yep. It's Moving forward, and I think Al, if I'm not mistaken, our beach bag revenue is higher than year to date than it was last year. Way higher, about way higher. I love that word, way, way higher. I get excited. About one hundred twenty thousand dollars 
more, $120,000 more at this time last year, this year. I'm excited. Some of that because of the increase, but not all of it. Not all of Mostly. it. We have, we have the same number of bad speakers now as we did last year, whole last year. Really? So number of bad I've been tracking that. Remember I asked you about a month, a couple weeks ago, I asked you the revenue numbers? Yes. Number I don't bad. mean to be a pain, but I just like to keep hold on that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's onwards and upwards. I should say that we did finally get at least some of the bike racks in. I saw them. Um, <laughs> all of them. They started before we were in Austin. I know, I, I know, but they're here. They're here. So the ones around City Hall are <laughs> these, good. Yeah. Um, the one that I think is out at Ventnor Coffee is the coffee cup. Okay. And I think there's a couple other ones like that. They're still coming in they're pretty, as, they're, as we they go. They look like they're built very nice. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're well very done. Sturdy. They're, they're, they're well sturdy. done. Good. The corrals, Ed is working on the corrals because we had a couple spots that he didn't really think were safe. So we altered where they were going to be. Um, I think the one by 4A bike will still go in in that spot. Okay. That's a good location. Yeah. Right. Remember we talked about a couple of corrals where yeah. it would be kind of in the corner of a, right. of a street. Of a street, yeah. And just be cordoned off and you could lock your bikes there. On a, is it on a 20 foot section? Yeah. I like it. Yeah. It's like your pocket park. Yeah. Park at, yeah. park yes. at. Yes. but it's for bikes right. perfect uh, little little kind of thing so we stay away yeah we want to we want to really encourage people to, to bike around town uh, no. which uh, we can talk later but i'm curious about which locations because the parklet design is going through final engineering right now and it'd be a good fit because if they don't um, interrupt the 20 foot but they use that as a buffer area mm -hmm. so there might be a location that they could both be on and it was the one fun. was going to go across the, right in front of customs Ed was uncomfortable with the safety of that yeah. on Dorset Avenue. Right. It's in between two driveways. And it was yeah. a little, that one I think would be a good spot for a park. It could. The original place of it. One of them. Yeah. So that right? would be, yeah. So that'd be a good, that's right. So that'd be a good, and it makes sense there because bonus seating, right? Yep. The concern Ed had with, I mean, I've talked to him about it with the bikes is site training. Yeah. Cars pulling out, it's very difficult to pull out of there already. Right. So that might be a reason why not to do it there. Right, either the park or the, the bike. So yeah, we'll talk about it. We'll Thank see. you. So we're good. Yep, that was brief. Yes. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> we're never brief. I know. Anyway, now we have a public portion where you, after we open it up, you can get up, to state your name and your address and whatever you like uh, to say. My name Wait, is. Hold on. I have to. Open, I have to get a motion. Mm -hmm. Do I have a motion to open public comment? So moved. Do I have a second? Second motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, my name is Beverly Goldberg, and I have lived here in Ventnor at 107 South Baton Rouge since 1966. Uh, my parents bought the house, Irene and Al Solomon. There was no Vassar Square condos there. They did not know they were building them. And they didn't know that they were building a parking lot next door to their house. Uh, Vassar bought the land, put a parking lot there, and that's all well and fine. That's the way it was. In 1980, I inherited the house um, with, along with my three children, Eric Barry and Adam Goldberg. And if we sound familiar, uh, we are. My son, Adam, is the creator of the TV show, The Goldbergs. And that's who we are. And we've been there. And we have a problem that we've had since 1980 when I inherited the house. And that is the parking issue on our street. Um, you got it. We're the first block in Renton. And the houses on the opposite side of me, the even side, have bigger lots. They all have parking. They all have garages. Me and two other neighbors have no um, kind of parking. We have an alley. We don't have parking. Remember, my house was built 122 years ago, 123 in 1898, at which time you had a horse and buggy. It was built with gaslight. It didn't even have electricity. And we're still standing, I can proudly say. But um, I, I need a solution to this. This is so bad. It's been going on since the 80s. And I was telling them out while we were waiting here that my son actually did an episode about it, about the parking uh, back in 1980. Somebody from five streets away came and parked on in front of the house. And I was in an argument. And my son was filming it with his video camera upstairs. And the guy you yelled. get a park parking permit? Yes, you but do. they don't work. First of all, they don't work for several reasons. Number one, um, Vassar condo, and they're really nice there. The people don't want to pay for parking on their lots and the valet and all that. So they get a pass 
and then they're all over the street. Then we have an Airbnb across the street from me at 104. And uh, he's advertising party house on the internet, <laughs> up to 50 people. I don't think so. So he has at least four to six vans every week that come. And these people what, are- What's that address? 104. 104. Exactly. And I you, complained you about have, it before. You, you do not have off-street parking. You mentioned an alley. I have no off-street parking. I have a little alley about 50. And we just paved it along with my neighbor gave me part of their alley so that if we have to, we can pull one car in there. But there's three houses like this on the street. So I would like some kind of an ordinance. First of all, Vassar Square, why can't they park their cars over on Vassar? They have parking for four, they want it. They want it on their other side of their parking lot. If you go over there, you can see. There's no parking when you come in the street and the, the apartment building's all the way at the end. I could see in front of the apartment building where you pull out, they don't want parking, but they have at least 10 spots that can be added and they're in favor of it, that they would do that. And secondly, I don't know if it's possible. Can we get designated on our street as a private street with no parking, unless you have a no. permit that you live on that street? We would have to do that for the whole city. You'd have to do that for the entire city. Okay. The city is there right away. All right, but I think it's if we parking. could give Vassar parking on both sides of their street, in front of a parking lot. It's not like there's a house there. Right. Um, I'm not saying the same. That would alleviate a lot of the parking on our street. It's not narrow. It's a wider street than ours. Well, I, the the trucks can't even get this. down our street when That's there's parking. Fine. too narrow. Yeah, public safety would have to weigh in on whether or not it is well, narrow or not. Can they, they look have, into it? Just, just to finish, they have equipment that has to be able to service I all understand. the understand. Well, that equipment can merely get into our street. And starting tonight, and I took a chance coming here with my car, because we don't leave our cars on the weekend. We're afraid. Uh, you know, I, I spent six months a year in Florida. And when we came up, I was on, we were only going to bring one car because of the parking situation. It's, it's so out of hand. And what's happened, and I've been here a lot of years, 55 years in that house. And what's happened is, you know, years ago, people had one car and they came and that was it. Now there's like they six. When you have like a house across the street getting six SUVs that are kajumbo, and today somebody parked and they had one of the uh, visitors' things it was all crumpled up like they had found it in the trash somewhere with something on top of the car yet, yeah, like an, what do you call those things when they have like a whole car thing carrier. on top? Yeah, I mean it's just ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, I don't know that we can we can't really comment on the the. Yeah one to three cars per family or the I know. size it's of the just SUV. A fact that, of I, I, I appreciate that. We all do. Yeah. We I all mean, live we all have city. that situation. Yeah, but but last weekend, I had we had a really bad altercation. Some young man came with a suitcase to visit somebody, grandmom over in Vassar or whatever. And my husband, we're, we're putting this uh, thing in so we can pull one car in. He said, would you mind parking a little down the street? And the kid said, I'm entitled because I'm a young man and I'm entitled to do what I want to do on this street. And he reported me uh, over to uh, your, uh, what's the name down there? Jimmy Agostino, who promptly came over and was ready to fine us for doing this pavers on the thing there so we could pull a car in. And I said, you got to be kidding. Here's some kid without tags. He doesn't even have a guest thing. And he comes in and he goes and complains, but me who pays fifteen or sixteen thousand dollars a year taxes? I'm getting a fine because we want to like try to get our car, one car at least off the street. But this you is you understand you have to get permits to do that work. Yeah, yeah, we know that. Did well, get, they did didn't take anything up; they just put some papers down on top. That's all. Well, I I went through this with Jimmy. I went through okay, it with him. Good. Okay. Was there because, a curb? Is there a curb cut there? Because I don't think you're allowed to have a curb. Actually, we had a contractor last summer who broke the concrete. I fell face down into this thing. It had to be fixed, or somebody from the street would but get hurt. You couldn't get a. You couldn't. You couldn't park there. You couldn't put a curb cut here because that would take away someone's legal street park. No, no, we have a curb there. We have, have a, a curb there. Right, but if you use it as a I have a uh, under the house. There's a garage for eighteen hundred up. Put your horse in. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. similar to what oh i see yeah. so there is a curb cut do you realize my house along with another one on the street were the first homes built i'm looking, that I'm looking at it right now yeah seven right yeah 107 so we were the first homes cut. built i'm not kidding i have an edison light bulb 
just for if you want to for your museum here from the year they electrified my house in year one of course wow. we've, we've done it but um you know it's kind of crazy it, it really is crazy and they made the lots too small and thereafter when they went down that's why like saying it in Drew's track all that is bigger because they realized what they did in the beginning of Ventnor that they made the lots 40 by 50 and then automobiles were invented and like, where are you going to put these things? Because, you know, you that, pick up that almost happened. the entire lot. Yeah. And yeah. You, you couldn't. So we have a very small two doors away. They were the other original house on the street. Um, you know, over the years, I've done a lot of investigation. I went back to the original deeds on things and uh, the house that they, which is an Airbnb facing Vassar, the red brick house with the white trim that looks like it's from the foreign legion or something. That was the original manor house for all of Ventnor. They owned all of Ventnor. And they, they deeded out these properties. It's really kind of interesting if you go into the archives yeah, yeah. with a lot of this stuff, and uh, which I've done. If you watch a show, you know that I'm very particular about stuff. But I, I'm here because I want some help. What are we going to do on the street that we can alleviate it? I do resent when There's... people come from three, four blocks away and yeah, park. Want. And they don't have the thing. I call the police. But they have a right to, right? They yeah, do. They they do. Anybody you don't own the street. street. So you don't own the street. I know. My Everyone husband to... tells me this all the time. Yeah. So we don't gonna... own the street. So and I don't do you think you're the, the only street? Maybe we can have the, uh, the, the attorney explain the... Uh, <laughs> Every well, street in the yeah, city yeah. has this parking issue. I think we yeah, have it more because we're the first street, the first beach, the first street. I think that when you have people come down and they... And I feel bad, you know... We, my husband feels bad for these people. He tells him you're only allowed to park here. First of all, the signage is wrong. That it should be not at the front of the street, but somewhere on the street right. so that they can see. I mean, they say, well, I don't see a sign here. We'll go back to the front of the street where it says four hour parking only on these right. streets. You need a permit. I mean, that's the first argument. Well, you're, yeah, we, we're compassionate for the issue. The city has partly the parking issue and has become that, a, some a, of that a victim of its own success. We broke. Some of those spots can't be, we can't put parking so, over for at least four or five cars over on Vassar. And you pull into the street, why do they need it so wide? We can't keep, treat your street any different than any other street in the city. And the and the and there, the fact is no one owns a park, even though you feel as though you should be able to park in front of your house, you are sharing that right away with any public citizen that might want to park there. I don't mind if they come, you know, so, I, I get, I get annoyed because they park smack in front of my house. I'm the, like the first house, the whole street can be empty. And I, I think your garage could fit a golf cart. <laughs> you think my garage what? would you fit a, what? an electric golf cart. Yes, I have. you could people, put, you people, could put a, some signage on it. How about trigger? We can put trigger in. You could, you, 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 if you, along with a little buggy. There might be a deed restriction for that, but a golf cart, electric, low, slow moving vehicle would fit in there. I'm so sure you know, my you husband would be that to spend the money. You could order it on Amazon because there's right. everything else. On a that lot house. of short, short towns mm -hmm. are using electric vehicles to keep people for this just yeah. the same kind of reason. We don't have enough plugs. Actually, he thought about getting an electric car, but you know, all they, you got to put the plugs in. This is not California where my son lives and there's 9 million plugs everywhere because yeah. nobody has a real car. I think we're adding some in the city. We are. <laughs> yeah. Two, look, two or three locations. But I will what? say on the signage issue, I'll have yeah. public works go out and look, put up yeah, the signage. I've heard this before. Vassar We've been said, trying to add them. Also, we need more signage on the street. Uh, I spoke to the police chief about it and he said, they don't, they come into the street, they don't look at this sign and they come in and they park. And then they're stuck with the policing end of it, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that they have to police it. They yeah. have to come and they have some kid hired for the summer. He writes it down and he gives them four hours. And, yep. and then uh, the street. I'm going to be back again about this whole Airbnb issue because I'm starting to really get pissed. I mean, they were parked four vans and then coming out, one hanging out in the middle of the street. Hmm. I mean, really. So if they're blocking the sidewalk, yeah. please call. Yeah. PD, yeah. The police. yeah. Police came. I called. I said, to call. uh, duh. You know, because I went you over. You have the non emergency number. You know that number? Yeah. 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 So I'm going to, we're going to look into me, the, the Airbnb. police know me. They broke into my house uh, last week by mistake. Okay. We'll, we'll look into they know who I am. And you can ask the police chief about that. Somebody's medic alert went off. A medical oh, alert. We're going to move on to okay. anybody else. All right. Speak it's a whole nother story. Your three minutes are up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you have any, uh, uh, 
they are holes. But if you have any ideas for us to come up with how we can alleviate this a little bit. I mean, I know Vassar said we would love to have a few spots on the street, right at the top of the street. Well, Commissioner Landgraf will what? have our engineer and Let him review it and just, that's all I'm asking for tonight. Okay. You know, and I'm no heading problem. home to cook my salmon because I'm trying to be good to lose that COVID weight. There you go. All right. Thank Stay you very healthy. much. <laughs> nice to see you all. Same okay. here. Jim, is there anyone out in the waiting area? Anybody from the public on Zoom who wishes to speak on any items, please make yourself known within Zoom by raising your hand or within the chat feature and you'll be recognized. You want to talk? Sure. Oh. How are you? I'm good. I don't see anyone, though. Okay, thank you. Sure. Linda Famelli, 5405 and a half Winchester Avenue. Um, this is actually for Commissioner Landgraf because he and I had a phone conversation a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. uh, with respect to an issue that happened on the fishing pier. First thing I want to do is apologize to you because I feel as though I kind of lost my temper on the phone because I was so upset. So I do want to apologize we, to you. We were both passionate. Put it that. That's How's true. that? How's that? <laughs> we no both apology are. needed. Okay. And the second thing I wanted to say was thank you because... I haven't seen those kids anywhere around. So I don't know where they got to, but I know that well, we had that a conversation with our peer masters and, okay. and they're monitoring it. Okay. Uh, they're making sure that one, they have the proper passes to be out there and that they're acting properly. Okay. They, they've, we, I sat down with both Lou Jean and, and Dan mm -hmm. and um, well, Seamus. I didn't get to speak to Jim about it, but passed it along through those guys that, Look, we're going to monitor this stuff. You guys aren't acting properly. Here's the rules. Right. You're not following these rules. Right. We, we passed an additional one tonight because we, we had a resident uh, go out there in the morning, like five, six o'clock in the morning. And there was three kids out there sleeping on an air mattress. Uh, not fishing, just sleeping. They were on the other side of the fence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we, we just passed that tonight. But that's that's on this mm -hmm. agenda. Okay. For those so I, I appreciate you bringing it to our attention. Yeah. Um, because that, that peer is an asset for us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and it draws people here. If you're out today, the spot must be running because they're, they're a tiny little fish. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But it's huge mm -hmm. in, in a in the Asian population. Yeah. That it's packed. Mm -hmm. They must be running. They run usually usually in August. But it would appear was so, so yep. one of the things I don't know if it's uh, it's in the works now is that we're going to replace is we have a design for that I've been working with the architect McLeese with on and it has a uh, we're going to move the we're going to create uh, a, some uh, a peer master's office at the gate okay that has the similar design and architectural character of the the new peer house and it'll have a eight foot gate on one side and a three foot gate on the other so he'll be able to have more closely monitor the access in and out mm -hmm. um, will be an attractive piece and then we'll look at using his office as a place to, uh, to lease for a snack bar of some sort mm -hmm. or to do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. but, um, but that should put him, an actual person that's seeing the behaviors or at least okay. being able to, during, all, during those hours okay. and the cameras on it. And we'll put, um, um, uh, so it should be during regular hours, it'll be, it'll be nice and it'll be attractive. You get rid of the prison looking good. Yeah, it looks, <laughs> it looks angry that game. This, look this one will be so. more welcoming. It'll have some, 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 some style. Well, whatever. I mean, I love that. But it'll help I the love character. the fishing pier. So help. I don't think it looks bad, you know, the way it is right now. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm sure it'll be beautiful when you guys are done with it. So, but I, I truly, I felt so bad with our phone conversation. <laughs> I and, and did. We, like I said, we were both passionate about it. And, okay. And I'm fine with that. Okay. You shouldn't feel bad at all. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great okay. night. Take care. Thanks. Jim, you said no one in the waiting room, right? No, I can ask one more time. Is anybody in the waiting room? No, you don't anybody have to ask one more time. What's that? You said you already asked, you right? Yes, I did. Okay, we're good. And we're good, right? I know how to find you, Tim. We're all good. Okay, do I have a motion? So move. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So move. Do I have a second? Second motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Excuse me. Meeting adjourned. Have a great week. Have a great week. Thanks.